Andy Hudsonite here. I'm going to tell you about four different video calling or conferencing apps that are absolutely free, easy to use, that you can get going with today. And I'm going to get into it right after this. Video calling or video conferencing is a great way to stay in touch with friends, family. It's a great way to increase our productivity when it comes to the corporate environment or if you're part of a large organization. But how can you get going quickly and for free if it's not in your budget to pay another subscription cost so that you can get face to face with people, especially during times when you're remote or maybe times when you aren't able to get together for various circumstances or reasons. Well, the first app that I wanna talk about is Zoom and it's by far the most popular video conferencing app out there because it is so easy to set up and use. The participants in the, in the call, not including the host, are not required to have an account with Zoom. So as soon as the host sets up the meeting, sends out the invite link or the code, all the other participants can jump in as long as they have the app installed on their computer or on their phone, they can be a part of it. Now, one of the caveats with Zoom is that you are limited to 40 minutes if you have three or more people involved in the call. If it's just between two people, then there is not a time limit. You can have up to 100 users in the free version, but again, keeping in mind that it's 40 minutes or less on that call, but 100 users is a huge advantage when it comes to the free version. If you're part of an organization that wants to try it out and doesn't want to pay the subscription to up that time limit, as long as you can keep those meetings 40 minutes or less, or if you're doing it among family, just keep in mind you're limited to 40 minutes of video chatting. Another aspect with Zoom is you can share screen and it's easy to do that in uh, whatever you might be uh, wanting to show the other person. Now, app number two is one that we're familiar with, especially if you're a Google user, and that is the Google Hangouts. There's also Google Duo, which I'll get into in a minute as to the differences. Google Hangouts is integrated already into your Google Tools account. It you'll see it in a calendar. If you set up a calendar invite, you can actually, uh, you can actually choose to uh, put a, a Hangouts invite in there with the calendar, which makes it nice. Now, Google Hangouts will allow you to use, have 25 different users, participants on the call. And as far as I know, there's not a time limit with this. So that's an advantage over Zoom if you're wanting something that has a little bit longer period of, of call but you don't want to you don't want to have to pay more for zoom to get beyond that 40 minute threshold google hangouts is something that you can also use screen sharing it also has what zoom doesn't have is you have some social uh, social interactions that you can do with it with uh, with emojis with gifs and you with the chat feature which you can also do on zoom but uh, you, you don't have those other um, you don't have those other benefits built into it like with Hangouts. Now there's Google Duo that I mentioned and Duo is a great little tool though the limit on participants for this one is eight but it's a great little tool uh, that comes standard on Android phones. You can install it on an iPhone. Uh, you can use it as web-based on your computer. In fact I just used this today with a friend worked out really well. It's very simple, streamlined, doesn't have all of the bells and whistles that Hangouts has, doesn't integrate uh, quite as seamlessly with the other Google tools as Hangouts does. So Hangout is just a, uh, just kind of a, a, a beefier version of the Google Duo. But Google Duo is a great thing to use if, let's say you have relatives that are Android users and want something simple you can do that if, if not everyone has an iPhone, which leads me into the next app, FaceTime. FaceTime is a fantastic app, great video and audio quality. And I should say that one other thing that's lacking with Zoom is that video and audio quality that you would get a little bit better with, with Hangouts and definitely better with, with FaceTime. Though the caveat with FaceTime is you have to have an iPhone or a MacBook some sort of Mac device in order to use it 
you can't use it if you have a, a PC or if you have an Android, but it is an extremely easy app to use and you can have up to 32 participants. Um, call quality, video quality is, quality is great as long as you have the bandwidth to support it. And the way that it highlights each caller is just very Apple-esque, very well done. And of course you can share all the different uh, emojis and, and GIFs and a lot of different features to uh, interact with people in that FaceTime uh, environment. So that being the third one, the fourth one is Skype. Skype is one that we're familiar with. It's been around a long time and was developed by a startup in Europe, it was bought out by Microsoft. And there are two different types of Skype now. There's a standalone Skype app and then there's one that's being integrated into Microsoft Teams. The Skype standalone app is one that is easy to set up and use. The caveat with it is that participants all have to have Skype accounts to be on it. So you can't send an invite to people who don't have Skype accounts and they can't jump in like you can on Zoom. So that's definitely uh, a drawback to using Skype. Though Skype's video and call quality is gonna be a little better than Zoom and you are going to be able to do the, the screen sharing like you can with Zoom and Hangouts. Um, but you're not going to be able to do uh, the, like I mentioned, you're not going to be able to have that those extra social tools like uh, you have in Hangouts that you don't have in Zoom, but you will have, I should say, you, you will have in Skype, you'll have the emojis uh, that you can share. So there are some benefits to it. And now, the Microsoft Teams integrated version of Skype is only available if you have a Microsoft account. Um, but the benefit of using Skype inside Teams is when you share out if a, uh, a link to be able to participate in a call if you're the host. Those people don't have to have Skype accounts to jump in. And this version of Skype inside Teams is a fantastic solution for corporations or large groups that wanting to get a lot of productive tasks done because it integrates with all of Microsoft's universe of tools to be able to share PowerPoints and, and Word docs and all of that. And Teams is a great project management system uh, that has a little bit of a look of, of Slack, if you're familiar with Slack's uh, project management software, but yet you, you're living inside the Microsoft universe and, uh, and integrates seamlessly with Outlook. So just a great solution there, but that's more of if you're coming from the corporate or business side of things. If you're wanting to just stay in touch with family or friends, I would suggest using something like Zoom, or FaceTime, Google Duo is even a great solution for that. So these are four free apps that are easy to use, easy to set up, and I hope these benefit you let me know what apps you like to use best for video conferencing or video calls down in the comments below or how you like to utilize these tools or tips for these tools. Love to hear from you on that. And be sure to subscribe to my channel here at the Handy Hudsonite where you can get more tips, hacks, and reviews like this one. Don't forget that bell so that you can get my content as it goes up. And I'll see you in the next video.